Today I'm going to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration functions. <clears throat> if you are taking or have taken physics, these are probably three vocabulary words that you're really familiar with. But not everybody in my class has, has taken physics yet, so um, I'm going to be going over what each one of these means. A position function, first of all, gives the location of an object at any time t. Usually time is represented with the variable t. And usually the position function is represented by an s. So this is s of t. It just means the position of the function or the position of the object at any point t just gives that location. So let's just uh, work with an example, a specific example for this, um, this day today. And let's just say s of t is equal to negative one-half t squared plus 2t plus 6. <clears throat> so if t is in seconds, it doesn't have to be, but we'll just say t is in seconds and s of t is in feet, and it doesn't have to be, it can be in meters, but we'll just use this, uh, this today for t, t is in seconds and s, in, s of t is in feet. So this just means either the height of the object or the distance away from the, the origin of this object um, follows this pattern. <clears throat> so this means that the object starts at 6 feet because s of 0 is equal to 6. It's either six feet above ground, or it might mean six feet to the right of the origin. And um, <clears throat> if you want to find out where the where the object is after two seconds, you just do s of two. And when you plug in 2 for that, s of 2 is equal to 8. And so that means after 2 seconds, it's 8 feet above or 8 feet to the right. And if you want to figure out where it actually hits the ground again, you can do s of 6. That's equal to 0 if you plug in 6 into this function. <clears throat> that means the object either hits the ground or it, it's at the origin. Sometimes we talk about objects um, going up and down, so that would be above or below ground. Sometimes we talk about objects traveling, traveling along a horizontal line, so that means um, it would be back at the origin. <clears throat> so you can get the average rate of change of this position between any two points in time, and we talked about this with the last video, the average rate of change. of position between any two points in time, you can get that by finding the slope of the line between the two points on the graph. Okay, the, the average rate of change of position is called the average velocity. Oops. This is called the average velocity. <clears throat> A chain, the rate of change of position is velocity. So the average rate of change of position is the average velocity. <clears throat> if you want to get the instantaneous velocity, you just calculate the derivative of s of t. So 
So if you want an instantaneous velocity at any time t, calculate s prime of t, that's the derivative of the, func of the position function, <clears throat> and plug in t. So whatever, whatever the time is, you're going to be plugging in that. So in our example, s prime of t, well, you go up to this uh, s of t function, 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. So s prime of t is equal to negative 1 times t plus 2. So that means that, oh, and that is equal to v of t, which is the velocity function. So here's our s prime of t, it's this, our velocity. <clears throat> so that means at zero seconds, this object has a velocity of two feet per second. v of zero is equal to two feet per second, and that's the initial velocity initial, if I can spell, that just means when the object starts at time equals zero. If you want to do v of two, <clears throat> v of two is equal to zero. This means that um, the actually the object has moved up to the highest point if it's going up and down, or it's moved to the rightmost point if it's going left to right. It's at the highest point or rightmost point. And V of 6, after 6 seconds the object has hit the ground or it's back at the origin, V of 6 turns out to be negative 4. And these are all feet per second. Now speed is another um, something that you're also going to have to calculate. Speed is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. Speed is always positive, either zero or positive. Speed is never negative. I'll just say it is non-negative. So the speed of this object at zero seconds was two feet per second. The speed at two seconds was zero. And the speed at 6 was 4 feet per second because you just have to take the absolute value of that velocity to get the speed. The last thing I'm going to talk about is um, I'm going to take this one step further and get the average rate of change, not of position, but I'm going to get the average rate of change of the velocity. So this whole paragraph here, I'm going to kind of rewrite, but instead of the change in position, I'm going to talk about the average rate of change of velocity. So the average rate of change of velocity, which is a slope of the line <clears throat> between two points of the velocity graph, which was negative t plus 2, right? This is the velocity graph of v of t. That's called the acceleration, or the average acceleration. <clears throat> So the average rate of change of the velocity, this is called the average acceleration. Average acceleration. And if you want to find an instantaneous acceleration, you find the derivative of the velocity function. To find the acceleration, and I'll just abbreviate it, A-C-C-E-L, to find the acceleration at any point, take the derivative of V of t. So 
the acceleration, they usually call that A of T, A for acceleration, that is equal to V prime of T. And in this case, in our example, the derivative of the velocity function is just equal to negative 1. So that means this has a constant acceleration of negative 1. The units are feet per second per second. So it's feet per second squared is what our units are on this one. <clears throat> Acceleration means the, means the object is either speeding up or slowing down. We we'll talk about the positive and, and negative um, velocity and acceleration. So positive velocity means the object is going up or to the right. depending on the context of this problem. And if it's a negative velocity, the object is moving down or to the left. That's velocity. If you have a positive acceleration, that means that the object is speeding up. And just you can just imagine riding in a car. If a car is speeding up, they would have positive acceleration. But if you have, or if the object has negative acceleration, it means this object is slowing down. And I think I'm about out of time right now. The bell's going to ring. So we'll have some, we'll have a lot of examples to work through in class tomorrow. But I just wanted to introduce you to um, position acceleration and velocity. And just know that velocity is the derivative of the position function. The acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function. And depending on what we are given for the position function, we can actually find velocity and acceleration at any time t that we're given. And that's it for today. Wow, nice and short. Lucky you.